Hi, this is Programming Blitz Basic, and I'm going to have a quick look at how to make star fields. A star field is uh, something you get in the background of games like Galaga, Galaxians, uh, some Space Invaders games, things like that. So basically, it just gives you an idea of being in space with a lot of stars moving in the background. Uh, for a beginner, it's something that looks quite complicated, but it's actually a very simple and easy effect to set up. Uh, it took me about five to five minutes here to write a um, st basic star field program. Which I'll just walk you through now, and obviously you can download it and in include it in your own games. So, obviously, we just set up our graphics mode. Uh, star field is basically just an image. Um, we're actually going to create the image from within the program, so we're not going to load it in from outside. And we're actually going to have three images that kind of overlap each other to give you uh, to, give, to give you the look of depth. So you've got three images on top of each other, moving at different speeds, which gives you uh, an effect called parallax scrolling. Um, which basically gives an idea of having something closer to you and something further away if it's moving slower. Uh, it looks pretty good when you use it with star fields. So we've got a size variable here, this is how wide and how high each image is, so we've got 600 by 600 pixels for each star field. Obviously you can change this and play around with these numbers as you want. Then we've got the number of stars on each image, that's pretty self-explanatory. Then we create the images, so we're going to have star field 1, star field 2, and star field 3. We create an image for each of these. We have 600 by 600 for each image, and then we start to draw to them. So we get to the first field. We set our buffer to the image buffer of star field one. So whereas normally you would set your buffer to the back buffer, which means you'd be drawing to a whole screen, um, which you would then flip onto the main screen. You're actually just drawing onto this image itself, and you can do this with, with any image you've loaded into the system or any image you've created using the create image uh, function. By loaded into the system I mean uh, if you've used load image or something like that. And this lets you draw directly onto the image because at the moment we just have three black images of 600 by 600 each. So we're going to do a for loop from, what, from 1 to num which is 300, that's the number of stars. We set a temporary value of 150 to 255, that's to store our colour and if we use color and put temp 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 that means we're going to make a grey color because if all all of your red, green and blue values are the same as each other then it's a shade of grey so for each star we set a shade of grey which is random and we then draw a rectangle at a random coordinate anywhere on the image so rand size means it will give a value back of anywhere between 0 and 600 and we'll make the make it two pixels wide by two pixels high. You can do one pixel wide but it shows up better if you use a, a fatter star, so each of our star, stars will be four pixels. We then do the same for the second star field. Uh, I've used a different number for temp here, actually making the stars slightly darker as I move back, just so the stars closer to us are brighter, that will be on star field one. And then the same for the third star field. We then draw to our back buffer, which is what we normally draw to. We start our main loop, we clear the buffer, we then tile the image, uh, normally you'd use draw image, what tile images it will do is it will draw the image at the coordinates that you specify, but it will also um, tile the image over the rest of the screen as well, uh, like a repeated pattern. So we're going to draw star field 1 at naught and SY, SY is star's Y coordinate. Uh, I haven't actually specified it, I probably should really. So I'll specify that at the start. You don't really need to, but strictly speaking, you could. Just going to start at zero. And then we're going to draw the second star field, but we're going to put that SY over two because we're actually going to move SY up by one for each loop. So what this means is that it will draw you will see image 1, which is star field 1, scrolling at 1 pixel per frame but you'll see star field 2 scrolling at half a pixel and star field 3 will scroll at a third of a pixel per frame that's incrementing that and then we just flip the, flip the image to the screen uh, one thing I have forgotten is I have forgotten to put a timer in here so I'm going to put one in you don't necessarily need this, but it makes sure that it runs smoothly. And also, the video on my laptop won't work if I don't have a timer in here. 
because some of the old timers do is it frees up the computer to work on other things as well, such as video, video on the screen. So. so if I run this now, you'll see we have three images scrolling down the screen and a star field. Now the next step for this is to take these stages, so you have the steps of creating the star fields and then you have your main loop of drawing them and updating their coordinates. What I've done is I've taken them piece of code and actually put it in to our Space Invaders game that we wrote in the uh, main tutorial. If you've not seen the tutorials, if you check through my other videos, you'll find a beginning but it's basic tutorial in 10 parts and by part 10 you'll have a, a quite simple Space Invaders looking game with sound and music and everything. So what I've done is I've put the parts of creating the stars into the first part of the game. Just when it's initializing all the other data. And then I've gone down to the main loop. So after it clears the screen, it draws the star field and increments it before it does anything else in the game. And that's it. So if I now run that with the star field running in the background. Which doesn't affect the game at all. But let's get on the screen. You should find it's pretty easy to, you know, integrate effects that you come up with, uh, such as particles, which is on a different tutorial in with any games I've ever written. Okay, and that's it for star fields for now. Obviously, if you put something else in, like uh, we've got SY coordinate here, if you put an SX coordinate in, then you can have your star field moving in either direction. And then if you tie in incrementing any of your SY or SX values in with the keys, so the cursor keys, then you can use the cursor keys to scroll around the star field. Uh, if you're making like a 360 degree space shooter game or something like that, like if you're writing, um, I don't know if you're writing Defender, you'd want a star field that moves left and right. If you're writing uh, Asteroids, you might want a star field that runs um, you know, in any direction based on whichever direction the ship's going in. So have a play around with it, see what you come up with. And yeah, let me know if you make anything good. Cheers, bye.